Hey guys, Jaybird here. We're going to be doing another tutorial today, and today's tutorial is going to be covering a new thing called volume decals. So, the first thing we're going to go over is how do we add a volume decal to our map. Right after that, I'm going to go over how they are used and what they are used for. And then finally, I'll just kind of do a little explanation of what I would have to have done in World at War using patches to simulate the same thing. All right, guys, let's jump into it. Okay, guys, so we're back in our test map again. So for volume decals, it's actually a type of entity. So what we're going to want to do is click B to bring up our entity browser. We're going to want to go down to MISC, and we're going to want to select the volume decal. So you can just drag this on, and it will create a little box here for a volume decal. So basically, in our old tutorial there, what ended up happening, we wanted to do a decal for the wall. We made a patch and we applied a texture to it and it had to be facing the area the way that you wanted the, uh, the decal to be and it also, it, it, it was basically just a patch with a texture. It's That's what it was. So now, now that we have this volume decal, this box here, if I can find it because it's invisible. Uh, so basically this box is going to apply this decal to whatever it's covering which is quite interesting because you could do a lot of really cool and quick things with this and it can base it off whatever shape you're doing and it can also act on models as well so you'll notice right now i don't have a texture on this thing so it's just doing this own texture but if you look at it it's actually warping around the model so this doesn't act like a brush so if i have this selected and i try to move it or if i tried to extend the box it's not going to extend, it's going to drag. So the way we extend this, as you'll notice on our little arrows here, we have the boxes on the end, so if you click and drag on one of the boxes, it will actually extend in that direction. So you can kind of just stretch it along, make it a bit bigger and whatnot. So it's kind of cool. So say we wanted to do a blood decal, and we wanted it to be a bit more detailed than the way that we did the one on our wall here so we wanted it to wrap onto a surface and the thing is you'll notice when I'm doing this decal here I have it applied on one face there so it, it always applies in one direction so if I'm looking at my uh, actual volume decal in here you'll notice I have it it's kind of faint but I have an arrow here and that is the direction of the upwards direction, which is actually facing in the direction of this arrow right now. So if I wanted it, I'd probably want to do more vertical to have the effect that I'm going for. So if I went vertically, then I could have it like this, but you'll notice now it's not on the sides. So you kind of want to have, you want to play around with it. So the angles kind of allowing it to go on the actual side of whatever model or mesh you're dealing with. The issue is it doesn't work properly with cylinders as much as like a brush. So if you were to come over and say put this onto the wall on an angle like this, you could have it kind of wrap around the corner, although you get this sort of area not working as well. So what you can do is just kind of play around with that until it looks good. Then you can find a decal, you could go to all and then come down to decals at the bottom here. And then just kind of look through this, try to find something that fits for you. Let's just go with our typical blood and we'll pick something, maybe this blood puddle here. So you'll notice the texture is kind of like weird. And if I use the alt right click method of moving textures, you know, I could line it up like that. But the easiest thing to do is to go to uh, your textures and go to fit texture and then, or Go to, yeah, fit texture and then fit texture again, and then that should fit it to it properly. So you can see our blood's warped up the wall. You know, it's not perfect, but it works really well. You notice the whole issue with the, the side there because we're having it face in this direction. If we wanted to have it come in on that this side here, we'd have to rotate it this way and then kind of like bring it back a bit. But yeah, you just got to play with the the actual settings of it. 
and just kind of rotate it around. Just remember that the face that it's going to apply on is opposite the direction of this uh, red arrow. So what we can do is now kind of have, say for instance we had this box here, what we can do is just kind of make it volume decal, drag it out a bit, kind of scale it. Remember the red arrow is going to dictate where it's going to be so why don't we rotate it so it's kind of on an angle like this and also like this. We're going to extend it a bit more. Oh, I've got the wrong thing. And what we can have is kind of a texture warping down like that. And we'll put our blood on and we'll fit it. And there we go. We got some blood kind of just coming down the wall. So it arcs down and comes down here. So there we go guys, that's the volume decal. There's a lot of cool purposes that you can use for this. It doesn't just have to be blood. Uh, it, there's lots of cool uses for this thing. It makes it a lot quicker than having to, if I wanted to recreate that actual thing with a, a patch, what I'd have to do is I'd have to go in and select the faces that I want the patch to be on. And I'd have to go faces to terrain, I'd have to move this around, I'd have to select my brush or my texture and it's not even going to line up properly and like yeah like it, it's, it doesn't even line up properly I'd have to line it up by hand and yeah it's much easier to use this volume decal to get this sort of effect to work so there we go guys that's going to be it for this tutorial really quick one don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial all right guys talk to you later